Hi you guys, this is Jamie from Whatever's Clever Boutique and today we're gonna do a fun tumbler tutorial inspired by a nail set. I'm in a group called Made by Manny and Mel Elite. It's a paid mentorship group and each month she does challenges and a couple months ago her challenge was use a nail set as inspiration. Well, I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just now getting to it, but I really wanted to take part and do that. So this is what we came up with. So I'm gonna use four rose gold glitters from Peachy Olive Glitters, and we're gonna use them to make a custom glitter mix. I did about equal parts, I didn't really measure, but I just kinda eyeballed it in what I thought was equal parts of each color. I will have all of the products that I used in today's tutorial listed and linked down in the description box below as well as some discount codes for you. Now we're gonna take our very fine masking tape and we're gonna create that wave that separates the rose gold color from the leopard print section of the nail. Now I'm gonna go in with my rose acrylic paint as well as two different ivories. The one looked too yellow and then the other one looked too cream, so I'm just gonna combine the two <laughs> to create a kind of custom acrylic paint color. And I'm just gonna carefully paint those sections so that they are the colors that we need for the base of each of the sections. This is kind of one of those do as I say, not as I do situations, <laughs> being that I very sloppily painted that pink on. So I do have to go in with two coats of this cream color to cover up the pink that I got way out of the lines multiple times. Okay, so now for the glitter. I wanted to kind of create an ombre effect with the bridegroom as the center, kind of like the chunkier version, and then the finer custom rose gold that we mixed as the outside of that pink section. As you'll see here soon, the colors were just very similar, so that effect just really did not come across as I would have hoped. It turned out gorgeous, but Initially when I went into it, I wanted to add some more depth and dimension to this tumbler by creating the ombre, but ultimately I would love to try this again and see if I can't get that to work out. But for this one, it didn't necessarily work that way. But I'm going in lightly here with Bridegroom on that center portion of the wave that is pink. And then I'm gonna go back in lightly with the custom rose gold that we made on either side. And I did do epoxy method here, sorry I don't think I mentioned that before. I just like using epoxy method 
for ombres because it just gives me much more time to work and I don't have to worry about things drying and not sticking well so that's the method I choose in these instances but I just keep layering those over and over until I get the kind of fade that I like and like I said these colors are very similar so they faded perfectly <laughs> but it did turn out really pretty And because Bridegroom was a chunky glitter, I am going to go in with my parchment paper just to knock all that glitter down and make sure that my epoxy application is smooth. I don't think I've ever shown this before. I'm obsessed with this little, I think it's called a glitter bug from the Bowen LLC. That's who I use for my turners. And this little thing is just so handy. It cleans up any glitter that's spilled over and it just it works so well <laughs> so I figured I'd give that little guy a shout out I'll have that linked below so you can grab one if you feel it could help you in your cleanliness of tumbler making we know it can be very messy now we're gonna carefully go in with some epoxy on that cream side and it did take quite a bit of time I sped that up because that rose gold was there you can see that some of it pulled over into um, that cream, but it covered up really nicely with the Chantilly glitter that we're using. So it ended up working out okay. I was a little bit nervous as I was applying the glitter. I was like, oh gosh, is that going to show through? But it all ended up working out great. Chantilly is one of my favorite peachy olive glitters, glitter, because you can put it over any color base and it's going to shift and turn to whatever color you have underneath there. Just a little side note for you. Now we're going to take some brown acrylic paint with our glitter glue and we are going to start the leopard print. And I do this before I epoxy because I find that if I epoxy and then go do my leopard print, the glitter sticks to the epoxy and it's almost like there's a static effect that's just not fun and it takes forever to get that glitter off. So I'm just going to go in with my brown glitter glue mixture and I'm just gonna create the centers of those leopard print spots. And I used French press here, and it ended up being a little bit darker than I would hope. So I'll link some, I probably would've used cold brew maybe. I'm thinking if I were to make this design again, just cause it's a little lighter and you'll see more contrast between the black and the brown. This one did turn out really pretty, but just as kind of like a side note for next time, or if you try and recreate, get a brown that's maybe a little bit lighter. Once we finish all of our brown spots, we're gonna do the same thing with our black acrylic paint, except we're just gonna add it right into that brown and just create like a super dark brown. <laughs> you can't tell once you put the black glitter over, but I wasn't gonna waste more glitter glue when I had a ton still sitting in here. So now we're gonna go in, and this is the tricky part because I am a perfectionist, and it's very hard for me to do quote unquote messy work, if you will. And doing leopard print by hand like this, I feel like it's very messy. So every time it turns out and I love it, but as I'm doing it, <laughs> I just have so much anxiety. So for anyone that has the same issue, I feel you. <laughs> but it is fun once it's done and looks great. So we're just gonna go in now and create our leopard print. Sometimes looking at a picture or something that you have that can kind of give you reference as to you know how to do the leopard print so that it kind of looks more natural. That can make it easier. 
and I did do that. I actually used the nail picture as my reference. Now I let this dry for a couple of hours and then I went in and really tapped off that uh, rim of the cup to try and get any loose glitter off. And then I just went in with a small paintbrush and started kind of brushing away the excess glitter. Generally I cut these out, but you know what? We're gonna give him his moment of fame. <laughs> when I'm working in the mornings, my husband's usually in the room talking and things like that and he'll sneak his hand in there and I just cut it out. But this time I was like, okay. <laughs> We'll let you be in it today. And back to the tutorial. After we got that glitter all brushed off, we went in with two coats of epoxy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my rim. I take my X-Acto knife and I just go across that top rim, get any of that excess epoxy glitter out of there. And then go in with my 80 grit sanding block and sand down to expose a thin like line of stainless steel. And that's where our final coats of epoxy are going to adhere to. And then I go through with the 120 grit sanding block and just sand down any high spots on the tumbler. Now I'm gonna go in with some pin striping to kind of break apart the seam that's just not super nice on either side where the pink meets up with the cream side. So I'm gonna start with a brown pin striping tape and I'm just gonna go and follow that wave line all the way across the tumbler. <laughs> Then I'm going to take some really fine, this is actually nail tape, and it's black, and I'm just going to follow that line on the rose gold side, not the cream side, just along that same line that we created there with the brown. And then I'm going to go in with a cream holographic and outline that black nail tape with this cream tape. So basically I just used all three of the colors that were on the leopard print side to create this pinstripe line. Once we get that vinyl all trimmed up, we're gonna go in with our final two coats of epoxy. And this kind of shows you here that ombre that I tried to create in the rose gold section just kind of all melded together and it is very pretty, but it didn't get that ombre effect that we talked about earlier. And here it is. I do love how this tumbler turned out and I can't wait to list it because I think people are really going to love it. And it's just a fun, different way for you to find inspiration. And that's why I love Mallory's group. Um, it's MBMM Elite. And she just has so many fun challenges to get you outside of your comfort zone, to get you looking into different places for inspiration. And she's just, she's so good at what she does. I'll link it down in the description box below if you're interested in joining. And I hope you guys love this tutorial. I think it turned out really good, and I think that it looks a lot like my inspiration photo. If you guys have any questions or comments about any of the steps or products that I use, feel free to ask. If you like this tutorial, feel free to subscribe, hit that bell button to be notified of any future tutorials, and I will be back next Saturday with a new tutorial. Have a good week.